Okay. Welcome. Um, I'm Grandmother Johnette with Grandmother Sasa, and we're in New Hampshire for our October Consciousness Update. So thank you for being part of this. Oops, it looks like we've got company here. <laughs> anyway, right outside our window is the Medicine Hoop of Life, where we have just done two days of ceremonies. And grandmother, it was spectacular. And we're bringing in the energy right here because we can see it. We can't ever show you the ceremonial place. So um, I've asked grandmother Sasa, who initiated me in 2020 as a grandmother, if she would um, say her prayer and by that, give us all a blessing. Grandfather Chief above the heavenly stars, hear our humble prayer, O Great One. You are the giver of life and everything that comes with it. We're but a small blade of grass in the vastness of Mother Earth. I ask for your guidance so I may see the clearness of vision, so I can see the beauty you have brought today to all of us. That you have created for us, bless my hands and bring down to you the blessings that so are desired at this time and need to in the healing of this earth and of its people. Grandfather, I ask you today to do our work on this earth, that we all come together back into the circle of life so that we can plant the seeds and grow as one with each other again. I hope. Uh -huh. So I'm calling this consciousness update a new foundation because I feel that there's a, a big change now in the foundation of beingness. So I've asked Grandmother Sasa to give a message as to what she sees in this big change. The, the message is hope. And today... Um, I'm going to have Grandmother Jeanette uh, speak about hope and uh, a paper that I had given and shared with her because everything we do we today, we have to have hope. You know, we're looking at the children, we're looking at the earth, we're looking at the sky. And in our prayers, we bring the hope to the people because it's in our way, when the hard times come, there has to be a speaker that comes to bring hope to the people. I come from the blue star of the Pleiades. I come from the blue star of hope. I came back to this earth to bring that to the people and hope that they can open up, heal, and accept the responsibilities. We're going back to protocol and spiritual law again. And it's going to be very hard for a lot of people to understand there are protocols and spiritual laws that we live by. But if we don't, this earth is not going to continue as we see it. It's going to get worse. We're 22 years into a 30-year drought. And we're seeing the expense of it as many. And uh, we saw it in many other countries and cultures. But we haven't had it like this in our own Turtle Island for a long time. And so we're going to see the hunger. We're going to see the cold this fall and winter like we've never seen it before. The winter is going to be harsh. There is going to be low commodities of things. So, you know, as my grandmother said to me, stock up on some things. Get your flour, get your Crisco, get your um, canned milk. Have those necessities so that you can continue your life and at least make something so that you can live. So I would like you, because this is a message that someone sent you, to read this. Um, it's a poem that didn't come from either of us, but it was such a beautiful message of hope that grandmother gave this to me yesterday, and I'm asking her to read it. You know, um, when this was sent to me, it answered the prayers, and this is the thing that we've got to remember, they answer prayers when they go out, and we never know how they're going to come through, and the topic was hope, 
If you can only carry one throughout your entire life, let it be hope. Let it be hope that better things are always ahead. Let it be hope that you can get through each the toughest times. Let it be hope that you are stronger than any challenge that comes your way. Let it be hope that you are exactly where you are meant to be right now and that you are on the path to where you are meant to be. Because during these times, hope will be the very thing that carries you through. And this was written by Nikki Bennis. And um, how it was sent to me is always through the airwaves and through um, what we are challenged with. You know, if I could only say one thing this year with myself, uh, it has been hope that has carried me through with the prayer and faith that I have. And, you know, uh, this year has been, I was in a coma for 15 days. I died three times and I came back. But I also, on the third time, uh, shared that Creator talked to me, and I had a choice of going back, or I can come to finish what I came here to do. My choice was to come back to the people and bring that hope and love and uh, prayer, because the prayer is what's going to keep us going, always. Grandmother. Thank you. And I want to share what um, today I was talking to her about this new foundation of beingness that I've been shown, and which is the topic of today's update. And I said, what do you see, grandmother, about this new place we're moving to? And she had two words that the, the fire yesterday, the sacred fire uh, gave to her, and that was softness and sweetness. So as we move into this new dimensional shift, even though there will be hard times, softness and smoothness will carry us through. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this change of ages. I see a, a big clock and it's like we're almost, the, the dial is almost to 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And when it goes around again, it's going to be at a higher spiral. You know, we, we move through, the stars move through the 12 signs of the zodiac, and then they go again, but at a higher spiral. Uh, last month, I, the, type, the topic was release. It's a big time to release and keep releasing because as we move through this change of ages, Anything that you carry with you that is not from the presence of your being will be a hardship, will be a burden. So basically, there's three aspects of consciousness itself. There's what we talk about a lot, energy and frequency. And we talk about the energies are getting stronger, which they are. The frequencies are getting stronger. So that's one level of the change that's happening. Um, White Eagle has always told me that the frequency part of consciousness is the masculine part. It's the energy, the doing, the, the brightness. Um, but there's a second very important part of consciousness, and that's actually the feminine aspect. And that's the invisible wisdom, the template. It's the, the guidance that tells the water to crystallize in, in the water crystal shape. It's the spiritual law. It's the invisible laws that help the universe unfold. This is the feminine principle. And it is changing also. As you, you said, there's, it's like there's new laws that we have to follow. Or maybe they're very old laws, but we've, the ancient, lo we've lost them. Well, they're ancient laws and we forgot them. <laughs> exactly. That's what they told me. Exactly. Yeah. So frequency, the template or the patterns of creation. But the third aspect that I had not seen changing until the last few weeks when I was given a few visions. And that is the space in which the frequencies and the patterns interact. That space is the foundation of being. 
it is, there's no movement there. And I always thought it was permanent, that the space itself wouldn't change. But what I saw in a vision uh, just last weekend, I was working with um, 12 women. I have a master's group that I take for six months. And we did a very high channeled uh, meditation from Mark. And afterwards, and you've probably been in these meditations where you're mindless. You can't, you can't think what just, you can't remember what just happened. You can't phrase anything. It's as if your mind got totally recreated. And as we sat in that place, it felt not just as if the rug had been pulled out from under us, but that while we were in that meditation, the rug had moved from, moved with us and everything on it from one world to another. So I believe we were, we are now at an entirely different place of being. And what's important for us to remember about that is to spend more time in the stillness, spend more time being present with yourself without the presence of your thinking. So stillness, you know, the center of the medicine hoop is always the stillness. Yeah, and, our, and the heart, the heart is the story of all of us. So go we've into lost, yeah, we've lost our heart. It's really what it <laughs> yeah. is. And and losing it means we don't know how to go back into it. So we meditate to go back into it. We go, you know, we may get sick to go back into it. That, you know, is all those things that line up. And once we get to those boundaries and foundations without locking our heart away, then we're open. It becomes much easier for us. It's like the flowing water. We're, we're going with the water. <laughs> okay. uh, but, it, you know, it takes time because we've learned one way to go back around to learn another way. You know, I think we always talk about, oh, my gosh, I'm losing my mind. But we've probably lost our heart and reclaimed our mind. Mm -hmm. So a couple things that I've channeled in my individual sessions this week, just to remind us, is, you know, it used to be when we wanted to head somewhere, we would, in our sailboat, we would set our sail for where we want to go. And um, I channeled from Mark, and he said, it, it's not that way anymore. Set your sail, feel the wind against your face and set your sail for the fullest wind and see where the wind wants to take you rather than where you thought you wanted to end up. For me, that was that is a continuing reminder of, you know, you we wait for the wave, we catch the wave and then we go where the wave wants to take us and trust that it's the right wave. And so I think that's also a good analogy. And I think the other thing besides feeling the wind or waiting for the wave is stop projecting so much of I want, I want, I want and be present in our hearts because that is the new foundation. This new foundation is, is oneness. I see it as kind of this golden pool it's it's a spiral and it looks like it's a it's a wormhole or vortex you can jump into and I was on the side of it I'm still on the side of it and it's this new place and it's a place of oneness and you have to give up the I in order to jump and when I saw it I prayed I says you know, creator, please help me give up the I, I am, I am, I am, which has gotten us to where we are so that I can jump into the us, the oneness. And I do believe that's going to change everything. So I guess our reminder as grandmothers is to go into the center of your hoop, your hoop of life, your medicine wheel, which is your heart. And at that point, it's not just your heart, but it's all hearts. And that becomes our new foundation. 
So thank you all for being part of, of this spiritual progression. Uh, as I've said, it's discontinuous transformation. We don't know where we're going, but we're all holding hands. So um, thank you, grandmother. Thank, thank you, you for the honor of being in your healing room looking at your beautiful hoop of life. So until next month, thank you and be the greater you. Blessings. Mm -hmm.